Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I have a video for you guys. And this one is going to be one that doesn't cost you much, which is great because I'm actually gonna be sharing 10 of my most cost-effective or literally free ways that you can update and elevate your home on a budget. These are also really easy fixes that don't have to take a lot of time and of course are not going to break the bank. So I wanted to compile some of my favorite ones here. I literally spent all morning thinking about some of the concepts on how to transform a space or just kind of elevate it without having to spend a lot of money. Because I feel like traditionally, when you think of an elevated space, you think expensive, you think luxury, you think costly, which is very true most of the time. But here on the Lone Fox channel, we like to do things on a budget where we can. But let's go ahead and dive on into these 10 tips because I have quite a bit to talk about. But before I do, make sure to press that subscribe button. It's somewhere around here. If you're decorating for fall or Christmas or holiday, um, the holiday shop is fully stocked on my website. So go check it out. I haven't promoted it yet here on YouTube. And when I do, I feel like that's when a lot of sales occur. So if you want to take a glance beforehand, feel free to do so, but let's go ahead and dive on to our first tip. First thing I want to talk about is something that you might have heard of or you might not have heard of this and that is public domain art and basically public domain art is art that has entered the public domain essentially meaning that an artist painted this either they have passed away or it's kind of gone past I believe it's a hundred years and then that piece of art actually goes into the public domain where people can actually utilize this artwork for absolutely anything that they want whether they alter it they print it go ahead online and search public domain art you can actually find a bunch of pieces that you can bring to a print shop um, and have them printed. But public domain art is accessible to anybody. So you, I, anybody can go online, search public domain art. And if it is part of the public domain, then you can use it. And there's a bunch of different websites. One of my favorites is Artv. I love using this one for finding public domain art. And I'll link some of my other favorites below. You can even find abstract, more modern style pieces. So there's a lot as a part of the public domain. So if you just do a little search, you can download the files, bring them to your print shop or print them at home. And then you have some really beautiful artwork to use on your wall that cost you virtually nothing. And my second tip is to stock Facebook Marketplace. If you are not one that shops on Facebook Marketplace or you kind of like go there every time you need something, I want you to start looking at it every single day. If you're looking for free or affordable pieces or you just want like accents for your home that don't cost that much, there really are a bunch of people on Facebook Marketplace that are either moving where they need to get rid of pieces quickly and a lot of times because of that, they're like, if you pick this up same day, you can have it for free. A lot of times in Los Angeles, people will move and they'll have plants for free, like just giving the plants away to a good home. Facebook Marketplace is a great place to constantly look and I have come across so, so, so many incredible free items, some of which I've picked up and used in projects in the past. The literal tree that was in the lobby room, which I'll pop up a photo right here, was free. Someone was just giving this away, so we went and picked it up. This would have been a couple hundred dollars of a tree, I'm sure, if I went to an actual nursery to find it. I feel like a lot of times this happens too with heavy pieces that people don't want to move. They're like, if you can move this out of my space, you can have it for free. So that's what happens on Facebook Marketplace. I just highly suggest taking a look, kind of getting into the manner of checking it more often than usual because you will come across free items every now and then or pieces that are super, super low in price just because a person's moving, they want it gone, they need it out of their house. So just start checking it a little more. This next tip does require a little cost, but it's kind of something to keep in mind if you are painting, because I do feel paint creates such a massive impact and it doesn't have to cost a lot. But I'm talking about checking the mistint section of your hardware store, whether it's Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever it is. A lot of times there's a mistint section, meaning that the paint color was actually tinted wrong, it didn't mix properly, something's wrong with that color or the customer didn't like that color. And because of that, they have it in this section. You can always ask like, where's the mistint section? Because they normally have that. And then those paints there are are normally 50% off, if not more. And it's great paint to use for accent projects, for DIYs, for refinishing a furniture piece. There's a lot that you can utilize that paint for and it doesn't have to go on your wall. So don't always think like, gosh, I wish one of these would work on the walls because you can always paint like a headboard with an accent color that might be fun or a color you never thought about that's in the mist tint section. So consider checking that out because it definitely can give you some color options or variety or kind of even drive you in a direction you maybe not have thought about going and it ends up turning out incredible. One of the most cost-effective ways you can make your home instantly look better is just removing clutter or corralling clutter, as I like to say. And there's a few different ways that you can do this. And what I mean by this is just more so clean countertops or clean surface spaces, because having like open surface space without a bunch of clutter scattered across it. So I always suggest seeing if you could find some storage bins, some trays where you can easily kind of corral items together, because even just consolidating them in little groups on top of trays or in little baskets, I feel like your eyes just immediately trained to go to what's not supposed to be in a space 
and you kind of look at all the clutter and you just kind of glaze over the fact that there's a beautiful design there. So sometimes just having a bunch of clutter can make your eye go to that and that's not what you want your guest that's over at your house or even you to feel in your space. So reducing clutter, putting it behind closed doors, just consider that as an affordable way to elevate your space. For my next one, this actually is a product that you would have to purchase, but it is not that expensive, I promise you. It's about $10 and it lasts forever and it is going to change the way your furniture and your home looks. It is called Howard's Feed and Wax. I've talked about this on the channel before. If you are new here, this product, I think I sold over 10,000 bottles of this product because when I found out about it, I swear I had never seen people like using it on furniture, or talking about it. And ever since really getting into antique and vintage furniture and buying pieces that have authentic use to them and dings and scratches and stuff. Howard's Feed and Wax is unreal because it is just like a magic product. It's essentially beeswax and orange oil mixed together in one product and you wipe it across furniture and it just rehydrates the furniture. It diminishes any scratches. It takes away like the imperfections of the furniture, but like the bad imperfections. It's not gonna take away that charm and that character that vintage pieces have. It just evens out the wood tone a little bit and it is absolutely insane what Feed and Wax can do. It transforms absolutely anything that's made of wood. So I use this on my dining room table. I use it on my dining room chairs, the legs on the sofa. I use it absolutely everywhere because just doing this like once every other month, it doesn't have like a shine to it. It kind of has like a satin finish. It's really beautiful. It gives it protection. It cleans it. I just love this product. I use it on everything. I clean like all my little vintage decors with it too. If you just scratch something like on your nightstand or on your floors or something, you just rub a little on there and you're good to go. It's one color. It's not like you need to like color match or anything. It's just, it's crazy how it works. These next two tips kind of go a little bit together, but also at the same time they don't. They're kind of more styling tips that are great ways to add a lot of style to your home without adding a lot of cost to create that style. The first one being styling with fruit. And this is great because it's an easy way to add something that you can also eat or you can utilize, whether you're baking like apples or even artichokes or pomegranates, you know, fruits that you would actually eat or vegetables that you'd actually eat and use, but also are great to use as display. So you can put them in a big bowl on a kitchen countertop, but they don't always have to go in the fridge. I think a great way and an affordable way to style your kitchen is using the actual produce that you're cooking with. And it's kind of like a changing piece of decor because you can cycle in different fruits for the season. You can add lemons, limes. And this next one here is probably my most used one in the video um, because you guys see me do this all the time. I go and forage for branches and for flowers and stems outside. Like I rarely go and buy flowers because I think you can just find so many beautiful flowers outside for free. Like you do not need to buy them and especially tall branches, like styling branches. I will go down the street to a tree that's not on someone's property and cut a couple branches off of it and I'm styling in a vase and it's gonna look like I went to the LA Flower District and spent $65 on branches. So use nature to your advantage. Like I don't suggest going to your neighbor's yard and cutting down their rose bush. Or if you see a tree that's really big, there's a bunch of magnolia trees around me that are so overgrown. It's just easy to cut a branch off and it has like the magnolia blossom on it. It's so pretty. It's a great way to add impact to a space because you could get a large branch and put that in a vase and that is so sculptural. It is massive. It doesn't have to cost you a lot, but it takes up a lot of surface space. So a lot of times when you're styling it just visually, you can flare out branches to make them a lot bigger. It's just a nice thing to keep in mind with if you're styling a space and you feel like you don't have enough in the room, like do a big arrangement of some free branches from outside. It's sculptural or it's organic, it's natural, and I think it just always looks so beautiful as well. Justin brought this up to me and was something that he actually did once with his friends a while back and that was having a home decor swaps. I think it would be so fun to get your friends together and kind of tell everyone to bring a couple pieces of decor from their house, things that maybe they don't think is vibing with their space and you guys can just do like a little mix and match, a trade. I think that's a cute idea to just kind of swap around decor without having to purchase new pieces or spend any money on anything. Even just trading home decor with a friend or if your styles may be changed, you could find someone else whose styles may be changed and you guys kind of pick at each other's old items. So definitely something to consider. Um, maybe get some of your friends together and have a little decor swap. 
This next one's not entirely free, but it also doesn't have to cost a lot at all. And you can kind of take it to whatever extreme you want to use. And this is all around like outlets and light switches. So swapping out outlet covers does not have to cost a lot. You can buy them in bulk on Amazon. Um, just new outlet covers kind of refreshes the way that it looks. But something else that I would also suggest is just swapping out traditional light switches for dimmer switches because dimmer switches are not expensive. Again, you can buy them in bulk on Amazon. Like if you went through your house and you're like, how many dimmer switches do I need? Having dimmers on all of your lights creates such an elevated feeling because you could change the mood of a space instantly without having to turn on the entire overhead light. Or even in my dining room, for example, I have yet to swap out the dimmer. So we're like unscrewing a couple bulbs at a time because sometimes it's just too bright in there at nighttime. And I've been telling myself for the past couple of weeks that I need to get myself a dimmer switch and I just haven't done it yet. But you can find dimmers for like $6, $10 online. But even something as simple as just new face covers for your outlets or your light switches if they're old and dingy or kind of yellowed because sometimes that does happen, especially with rental properties if they don't want to update them as often. But an easy fix to kind of refresh that and give it just a little bit more of a clean look is to just purchase some new ones that don't have to cost a lot. And my last tip is trying out a new layout in a room. You know, if it's not working for you and you've tried a bunch of different ways with decorating or styling a space, or you've been swapping in at different items here and there, sometimes it also could be the layout. So just playing around with the layout of a space is an easy way to transform the look of it. So even if you want like a new look in your living room, maybe transferring the sofa from one wall to another wall or even floating in the middle of the room. I feel like a lot of people think that their sofas need to be pushed all the way up against a wall. You do have the option of floating a sofa as well. So don't always feel like you have to constrain every piece of furniture to a wall. You can always have different furniture pieces float. You can even back furniture pieces up to each other to kind of create like a centralized island in a space. Like let's say you had like a big loft, for example, but you wanted like some separation. You can put like two big dressers or like two large armoires back to back. And that can kind of create like almost like a wall, a makeshift wall that also provides storage. And if you don't want to do like the actual hard labor, you can just do a quick measurement of your space, measure the base piece of furniture you have and go online. I always go on West Elm's website to their floor planner. I find it's the easiest one to use and you can just map out your floor plan right on their website and then just add your different furniture pieces and you can kind of move them around and play around with the layout. And then you can go ahead and switch it around in person to see if it's maybe something you're going to enjoy a bit more. And that guys was my 10 budget friendly and affordable almost free hacks on how to transform and elevate your space. And I hope that one or two or even 10 of these could help you guys out. Let me know in the comment section below if any of these you are going to implement into your space or if any of these you already are doing and you also agree with them and love them. So comment below. And of course, anything I talked about in this video, I will also link in the description box. So anything that I might've mentioned, check down there for it. And I think that is really all. I hope that you guys like this one and make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you did. And also subscribe to my channel, brand new home decor and DIY content doing a lot of stuff in November and December. I'm so excited you guys just wait. I'll see you guys soon. Bye!